Nuclear fission, as the name suggests, is the splitting of an atom. A heavy atom, such as uranium or plutonium, is bombed by neutrons. This collision leads to the uranium being split into two light elements, neutrons, and a lot of energy released as heat. Now, imagine if you had a few extra uranium atoms floating around. Neutrons from the first fission reaction would collide with this uranium, creating another fission reaction, and then another, and another, and another, until the uranium runs out. All the while, huge amounts of energy are being released. This is the basic principle of how an atom bomb works. An atomic bomb can release more than 20 kilotons of TNT, and the man that made the bomb a reality was J. Robert Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer was born on April 22, 1904, to wealthy Jewish parents Julius and Ellen Oppenheimer in New York. He studied at the Ethical Culture Society. Growing up, Oppenheimer was a precocious child with a broad range of interests. He was passionate about everything from rock collecting and poetry to literature and philosophy. However, his attention eventually settled on physics. He received his Ph.D. in theoretical physics at Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge and the University of Göttingen in Germany. These two institutions exposed Oppenheimer to legendary physicists like Paul Dirac, Niels Bohr, Ernest Rutherford, and more. As a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, he showed a talent for synthesizing the new and complex physics concepts of the time. The world of physics was in an uproar. In the last three decades, Physicists had been confronted by Einstein's general and special relativity theories, as well as E equals mc squared and the complicated quantum behaviors of electrons, protons, and neutrons in an atom. Oppenheimer applied himself to a wide array of these problems, both for his own work and for his students. His charismatic personality only heightened his intellect, which earned him quite a fan club. In 1939, news traveled to America about the discovery of nuclear fission. Also in 1939, Germany invaded Poland and World War II began. Much of the best physics was happening in Germany, and scientists began to worry that Hitler would realize the potential for nuclear fission and create a bomb. Physicist Leo Szilard and Albert Einstein urged action from the only other power in the world they thought could oppose Germany, America. In 1942, the U.S. government authorized the Manhattan Project, and its military head, General Leslie Groves, picked a physicist in whom he not only saw ambition, but also the genius and energy to beat the Germans to the bomb, Oppenheimer. In the span of six months, Oppenheimer managed to recruit the best physicists of the age, Enrico Fermi, Hans Beth, and Richard Feynman, among others. He set up the work structure of the different labs and shielded the scientists from the rigid structure of military life, which allowed the scientists to fully realize their potential. His insights were invaluable. The difficult tasks of extracting enough uranium, as well as determining how to set off the chain reaction, required collaboration, but also streamlined effort, both of which Oppenheimer facilitated. Somehow, the project didn't evolve into chaos. On July 16, 1945, a new type of bomb, equal to 24 kilotons of TNT, scorched the desert of New Mexico. The Trinity test bomb was the first time an atomic bomb ever detonated. Their success changed the fate of the Second World War and the way humanity has fought wars ever since. For a bomb that was once unimaginable, it took a mere two years and two billion U.S. dollars to make, along with more than 600,000 people working on the project. Then, three weeks later, two atomic bombs, Little Boy and Fat Man, were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan respectively. The sheer magnitude and horror of the bomb made it abundantly clear to everyone that nuclear weapons were more dangerous than anything humans had ever before used in war. Oppenheimer, in a press release, famously said of the test, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Quoting from the Bhagavad Gita. Remembered the line from the Hindu scripture of the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says now I am become death the destroyer of worlds I suppose we 
we've all thought that one way or another. World War II ended, and Oppenheimer, now called the father of the atomic bomb, would spend the rest of his life trying to ensure that nuclear weapons would not be misused by any government of the world. The devastation in Hiroshima and Nagasaki was proof to him that the development of the bomb could either end all future wars or lead to humanity destroying itself.